1993, there was great excitement at the American Booksellers Convention. And at the Miami International Palace, the publisher, Alfred Knopf, actually lit up the whole exterior of the Miami International Palace purple. And that was in tribute to the party they were throwing for a budding new author who also happened to have just done the colour purple. And you can guess it was Oprah. And there's no exaggerating the sheer excitement of all these booksellers. 1,800 of them were invited to the most elaborate and extravagant party that the publisher had ever thrown for any author. And after Oprah Winfrey spoke that night, she got a standing ovation for over 20 minutes. All the people that were there were served French champagne and crystal flutes, and they had huge groaning platters of shrimp, they call it in America, here we call them prawns, and sizzling sirloin and, you know, choice cuts of beef, and it was just the most glamorous, glamorous party. And the reason why the booksellers were so excited was the fact that Oprah Winfrey was going to release her memoir. And they knew just what that meant in sales. They knew it was going to be the book of the century. She hadn't started her book club at that stage, but they already knew just how much pulling power Oprah had. They got a little hint of it because the previous month before this big convention, she'd done one program on the book, The Bridges of Madison County. And now this was already a bestseller. This was already a huge hit. But that one program generated within one week 350,000 extra sales for that bestseller. Now that is unheard of. That is unheard of influence. So all the booksellers of America would just thought, here is our saving grace. Here is the person that can turn the book industry around. And by kicking it off with her memoir, oh, all their Christmases had come at once. Now it was a really exciting time for Oprah too. Not only was her memoir about to come out, but it had also been announced that she was going to marry Stedman in the fall. Plus she was looking fabulous. She was in one of her thin phases and so everything was going along rather swimmingly until 15 weeks before the book was due to be published she rang her poor publisher and she pulled the book she said that she was postponing it that she couldn't go through with it that she felt that there was more to say or or ways to say what she had to say in a better way and you can imagine the publisher's reaction they contained themselves and they acted very, very, very supportive. But Kitty Kelly found out sort of the inside track on that reaction, and someone confided in her that they were just absolutely devastated, and they were trying to push their feelings aside because they didn't want to lose her book. They didn't want to lose her as an author, and if postponing was what it took and being nice about it is what it took, then they were prepared to swallow their feelings. In real terms, monetary terms, card hold cash, that phone call cost that publisher $20 million. Now, how did Oprah get out of it? Like, did, you know, a standard binding contract, surely? Well, no, <laughs> they didn't have a standing binding contract. She's very good at giving those out, but she's not very good at signing them. Or maybe she is good at not signing them. What she had was a non-binding agreement, just a letter of agreement with the publisher that she was going to forego all advance royalties for her book in exchange for 50% of the profits going forward. Now, that would have resulted in a huge amount of money, and the estimation was at least $20 million for the publisher and at least $20 million for Oprah Winfrey. So what went wrong? Why, why did Oprah actually pull the book? Well, it had something to do with Maya Angelou because she was at that party, at that American booksellers party. And after the standing ovation and the great reaction, she went up to Oprah and she said, is there anything about that book that is exaggerated? Is there anything about that book 
that you've sort of over egged the pudding on because you cannot afford to release it if you have. And I'm going to share a quote from the book, which is supposed to be uh, their conversation. Uh, I don't know where Kitty Kelly got this from, but she has got it in quotation marks. So I presume she got it from a reliable source. In a private conversation with a man who had received a telephone call from Oprah, she said, the reason I pulled my book was because Maya Angelou came up to me after the big ABA announcement and said, is there anything in that book that is exaggerated? Is there anything that is not true in that book? I said, well, yeah, some things are written to read well. You know that, you know, some things, you know. And now this is the very powerful thing that Maya Angelou said. No, baby, I don't know. I don't know, said Maya. I only know that you cannot have one exaggerated story, one untruth, one embroidered recollection. You cannot. If you do, take that book back. Do not publish it. Now, this rattled Oprah, understandably, because obviously Maya Angelou would have her best interests at heart, and obviously Maya Angelou is also a very experienced, very experienced author, and Oprah really looked up to her. It's interesting, you know, it's really the advice that should be given to anyone that writes a memoir, and maybe Oprah could have shared that wisdom with uh, someone else in Melodrama Cito. Here's another little tidbit about that moment. Oprah was so concerned about Maya Angelou's warning that she summoned her and six other equally close friends to her farm in Indiana for the weekend after the the American, I nearly said Australian booksellers, American booksellers association. She gave all seven, including Stebman and Gail, copies of the manuscript and asked for their honest assessment of whether she should go forward with the publication. To a person... Each recommended she cancel. Now, they sort of justified with that with her saying that there was enough people out for her. There was enough people giving her a hard time in the press at that time. So why give them a club to hit you over the head with? Because the book, the memoir was very confronting. It had a lot of things in it that uh, put Oprah in a bad light. It had drug use. It had, I mean, she can't be blamed for a childhood trauma. She can't be blamed for being raped. She can't be blamed for falling pregnant as a consequence of that rape, obviously. But evidently that led to her being quite promiscuous and drug use and affairs with a married man and other sort of unseemly events that took place. And all her friends and her fiancé were concerned about the repercussions that would have. Evidently, Stedman was also concerned by the fact that she names her rapist or she named her rapist in that book, which has never been published. And her uh, accused rapist was her uncle and he was still alive at the time. And Stedman had the feeling that things like that needed to be dealt with from within the family. Also in the book, she was very damning of her mother and she made out that her mother pretty much dumped her from birth and that's not quite true. Her mother did look after her until she was four and a half years old, whereupon she did leave her in the care of others because she wanted to go and get a better job. She travelled to earn more money, get a better job and try and establish a better future. Well, that was the idea when she left anyway. So Stephen thought that her betrayal of her mother was a little too harsh and a little unfair. There was also great confusion at the time because Oprah um, did say to Ebony Magazine that she was going to marry Stedman. Uh, it, it was this, um, October, Ebony Magazine marriage to Stedman in the fall. That's what she said in an interview with Ebony Magazine. And yet that was in October that in November, when she was asked about it, she said, I never said that we were going to get married. I never gave you a date. That was just the press. Sounds quite familiar, doesn't it? Sounds a bit gaslighty and a little bit familiar. Anyway, I thought you would enjoy that snippet from the Oprah book by Kitty Kelly. And it's really interesting to see that really 
Probably she dodged a bullet by not uh, publishing that. A year later, she tried to make it up to the publisher by actually publishing that book that you may know in the kitchen with Rosie. So she gave them that to publish. And they did an advance print of about 450,000 copies for that book. And Oprah rang them up and said, no, 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 you should do a print run, you know, of at least 750,000. This is really going to go. Because she said, people have seen me overweight for over 10 years. Now they're seeing me slim. Everybody is going to buy this book. I still remember that episode in the kitchen with Rosie and I got the book. <laughs> so I still remember that. And I, I got the book because it was a huge seller in the bookstore I was working in at the time. But um, yeah, she sort of, uh, it was lucky that she didn't publish. Uh, later on, she tried to sort of cover the story a little bit as things unfolded through 1995, 1996, she did slowly sort of admit to some of the things in the book on her show. She would actually make a show about it and she would just let it slip that she used to use drugs and things like that. So very slowly and carefully, she leaked out things into the public consciousness and she sort of got away with it by doing it that way, by stealth. Let me know what you think. Please, if you enjoy my work at all, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe because it helps push my videos up a little bit in the algorithm and YouTube will give me a little bit more of a help if you subscribe, like and comment. I would appreciate it so much. Thank you. Now, book bits are just a little snippet of a book, just a juicy tidbit just to whet your appetite. And that's exactly what I tried to achieve with that story from Oprah by Kitty Kelly. See you again really soon. Bye.